Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jack Daly, who is literally up the road from me in San Clemente here in Southern California. How are you doing, Jack? Doing fantastic, John. Thanks for having me on. And Jack has got a remarkable like 30 plus year um, track record in sales and has written a number of books. One of his most famous books is uh, Hyper Sales Growth. And then after that, he wrote a uh, how to create a playbook based on that. So I really wanted to talk about playbooks today, Jack, because the idea of a sales playbook gets thrown around a lot. But sometimes I don't think people really understand what a playbook, sales playbook really is. So could you give a definition from your point of view? Yeah, so John, really easy. Uh, it, to put things into context, uh, I started selling at the age of seven. So I've been at that game a long time. I built six companies from a single sheet of paper into national firms in the U.S., all fast growing. My largest sales force was 2,600 salespeople. No matter where I went in the States, when I visited one of my offices with 2,600 salespeople, I'd address the salespeople there with this message. There aren't 2,600 best ways to sell this stuff. Mm -hmm. So what do you say we figure out the best ways and then build the systems and processes, practice the systems and processes, and I bet you we kick the living crap out of our competitors. <laughs> and so it's all for me about systems and processes. There's hardly anything that goes on on a sales call that you couldn't anticipate before you get there. And as a result, there's no reason to not be better prepared. So I like to say it this way. Sports teams are run better than most businesses. Right. Because there isn't a coach at any sport at any level that would consider putting the players on the field without a playbook. Right. No, ab right? absolutely. But but then, um, Jack, and you've probably come across this a lot, is you know, when you talk about process in most areas of an organization, like you know, software developers process, yeah, they get it. They can't work with their process. You know, your accounting department process process. But when it comes to sales, there's often this kind of, oh, well, you know, process, yeah, but, you know, we need to have that kind of fluidity. And, you know, how do you answer that? Yeah, so it's no different than I'm going to go take it back to sports, John. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the University of Alabama football team has won five of the last eight years the national football championship on college level. Mm -hmm. And Nick Saban is the coach. Now, he's also the number one recruiter of football players. So I want you to think about a football player that's playing football since he was four years old. He becomes a high school All-American. He gets on to the University of Alabama football team. Nick Saban shows up and says, here's the playbook that won five championships. Mm -hmm. Study it and practice it. I don't think that guy that was, uh, was the Heisman Trophy winner turns to Nick Saban and says, well, I've been playing football since I was four years old. I've got my own style. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Look, look, here's the thing. Uh, the majority of salespeople don't want to really be held to a playbook because they don't really want to be managed. Mm -hmm. They want to be loose. Uh, they they want to be free. Uh, they, they think that there's something special and that this whole uh, style thing works for them. Well, when I go out with the very best performers in sales, now I want you to understand something. Mm -hmm. The top 10% the top of salespeople are generating a disproportionate amount sure. of the sales in the world. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's out of balance to a magnitude that's mind boggling. But when you ride shotgun and ride side by side with the best salespeople for a day, if they encounter the same objection on four different calls, They've got the same answer. They, they figured out what works. They basically are playing with a playbook, and the rest of the salespeople, they, because they don't have a playbook, mm -hmm. they think that the guy's just making it up like they do. <laughs> but what we should do is model the best people, find out what they're doing, put it in the playbook, and then practice those plays. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's you just hit on a key point there, because I think, um, you know, going back to your sports analogy, uh, 
what's what what high performing sports team would turn up on a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever they play their game having not really done anything during the week have not practiced you know have not worked it out but yet we will do that you know we'll turn up to a sales call without prepping properly or we won't practice in the meantime we won't role play we won't do stuff to help us get better i mean why do you think that is well i i, I again I, I think that the majority of salespeople don't like being held accountable. And an accountability is what drives performance. Um, take anybody that's good at anything in life, and I'm going to tell you that they have a coach. Mm -hmm. And that coach, one of the things the coach does is holds those players accountable in any dimension. It could be in the music business. It could be in the theater. It could be in sports. Um, it could be, look, every one of the top senior executives running significantly growing companies has a coach. Mm -hmm. And the coach is there to keep them honest, to hold them accountable. You know, if Steve Jobs can build the highest valued company in the world, and have such a huge ego, but be smart enough to hire a coach mm -hmm. because he needs to have someone hold him accountable. Why don't we wake up and listen in the sales side of the house? Yeah, it's a, I, that's a great point. And maybe some of it is because we don't like having mirrors held up to us, right? I mean, maybe we don't like to admit that, uh, that there are things that perhaps we're not doing that we should be doing. Uh, uh, so getting back to the the playbook itself, right? So what are some of the key components of a playbook? Or how, when you work with the company, how do you help put together the playbook? Yeah, so, so the first thing that I would tell you is that um, we have 168 hours given to us every week. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the planet, 168 hours. Some of us are doing a lot better with our 168 than others. Mm -hmm. If you want to make more money, and generate more sales as a sales professional, then you need to be very disciplined about how you invest your 168. So our, our moniker here in our company is HPAs, high payoff activities. Right. When we go into companies and we wanna know what does the salesperson spend their time on, and we make up two columns, one HPAs, and then anything that didn't make it into the first column is other. Mm -hmm. More than 50% of a salesperson's time today is in the field being spent on non-HPA items right. that could be better deferred to someone else inside the company, outside the company, an assistant. Um, if, if I were to give you me as an example, I built my company with no employees, um, but I have six assistants that are helping me with growing my mm -hmm. business on non-HPAs, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and so find out what the HPAs are and then build the process, build the system that says you're going to allocate so many hours per day and per week and per month to these HPAs. And if you follow that discipline, you will generate more revenue. So that's one process. Right. The second process is pipeline management. This, this process, John, has to be done at least once a month. We recommend it be done every, every week where we identify the prospects that we're working on. Who's the number one prospect that if you land at that account, life gets good? Who's number two, number three, number four? Um, and then what we want to know is when did you last touch them? In what ways did you touch them? And what's standing in the way? of them doing business with us. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were my salesperson and I were your sales manager and every week I was taking you through that discipline of a process, you wouldn't like it because I'm holding you accountable. There's no place for you to hide. I'm holding you accountable. Right. But every time I do this, the sales go up and so does the income of the salesperson. Right? Right. Um, the, 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 the idea that there's a million objections out there, right? Like, oh, when I ask my audiences how many are out there, that's what I get, infinite, millions, thousands. <laughs> Every company that I've gone into, John, they've never been able to get more than 12. Right. So if there are 12 or less major objections, why not figure out what they are, build them into your playbook, have the best answers to them, 
and then practice. Right. And you know, this, this this is the way it should work. Yeah, and it's, it's and professional. It's, and it's back to that idea of practicing, because you're right. I mean, there are only so many objections uh, for any product or service. And if you role play, the thing is, if you if you role play them or you practice them, not only yep. not only are you prepared when they come up, but as you know, really good salespeople actually figure out how to eliminate them so they don't come up. Absolutely. So, but 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 here's here's the here's the hidden gem. The hidden gem is fifty percent or more of success at selling has nothing to do with the systems and processes. It has nothing to do with the product, the price, or the service. Fifty percent is what's going on in your jar. Right. Right. Well, if you're practiced and you're prepared, then in your head, it's almost like you get out of the car on a call and you say, "I hope they give me this objection." Because I've got that answer, <laughs> as opposed to knee knocking on the objection, right? Right, right. Well, I think you've, you've again, you've hit on a critical point there about attitude. Because it's like, if if I go in expecting to lose the deal, right? Expecting right. the objection to come up, or I'm in a slump. I mean, a lot of it has. I mean, the game's over before I started, right? If I have that attitude, I've got to go in with that with that positive attitude, and then knowing that I have the tool there to fall back on right it, and, and you know I, I i hate going back into the into the sports analogies but years ago tiger woods owned the golf world sure but but he may you may you may hear about his back injuries and all the rest of that quite frankly where he lost it was here sure and he, his personal life became a shatter and it ended up influencing his head and then all of a sudden Instead of the rest of the players showing up at tournaments saying, oh, Tiger's at this tournament, he's going to win, I'm playing for second. Right. Now they know he's vulnerable, and he feels like he's vulnerable, so he hasn't been at the winner's circle in seven years. Right. That's a head job. Right. Now, the, the skill sets didn't change that markedly, but the head job did. So our point is get your head in shape by being prepared before you get to the call. Now let me show you an example. Mm -hmm. A guy without a playbook – goes out in the field, and on his first call, he hears this from the prospect. And I'm already happy doing business with a competitor of yours. I just don't, I don't have any incentive to move. And you give him some response, and it doesn't work. Right. So on the third call, you hear the same thing from a different guy. So the, the guy that without the playbook says, well, what I said to the guy this morning didn't work, so let me grab something out of the air <laughs> and see if that'll stick. Mm -hmm. now, it, He's and by the fifth call, he hears it again and it didn't work. He's looking for another like you don't have a clue. That's like a sports team running out and saying, go long and I'll look and see if you're open. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. But it, it always does fascinate me, though. So uh, when it comes to sales management, so you do all this work, say, with the company and you put the sales playbook together. Uh, but a lot of times it really comes down to how well the sales management reinforce and and push the adoption of it, right? That's correct. So so what we tell our clients is if you have salespeople in the organization that, quite frankly, are going to fight the playbook, then welcome them to go to work for the competitor. <laughs> and from now on, hire salespeople and say, we operate by way of a playbook. This is why we operate by the playbook. You're going to make more money as a result of it and practice this playbook. And when you hire people with that mm -hmm. and they get that understanding, then you take off. So I can give you client after client after client that are growing at mind boggling rates mm -hmm. and salespeople that are coming up to me saying I'm making two, three and four times what I was making before financially. The quote unquote, you changed my life. And all we've done, we haven't changed the outside world. We've changed their heads and we've changed just a few things, like eight objections in the responses, you know, the, the 10 HPAs that you ought to be following. Mm -hmm. Sit down with your salespeople, managers on a weekly basis and see if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing with their pipeline. They, they, yeah. I'm not talking about some giant three ring binder. I'm just <laughs> talking about basics, fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I love that idea of the, of the, um, of the activities, you know, the high, the high impact, high payoff activities, high payoff yeah. activities, right? Because, but 
but let's face it, there's there's a lot of other activities that I think sometimes we fall into. They're comfortable activities. They fill up time and we can say we're super busy, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you, when you work with organizations or you work with individuals, how do you persuade them away from those and just say, listen, you've got to let go of those and you've got to get over here? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind you of the old uh, calendar where you showed a week at a time, mm -hmm. and every hour of each day was slotted in. And if you can think of how your physician um, books appointments with sure. his patients, so what we want is a salesperson to identify the HBAs and block in that time on that calendar and give it to their manager, and the manager critiques it. And then they come to an agreement, and that's their calendar for the week, and the sales manager holds them to it. Now, here's a little bit of real life. When real life occurs, and all of a sudden there's a fire that goes on over there, mm -hmm. and there's a, we got a, a run over to this emergency, and all of a sudden, what you thought you were going to work on that day, it's now four o'clock, and none of that got done. Let me tell you what the top people do they make a call to their significant other and say, put dinner for me in the fridge, I'll microwave it when I get home, but I'm going to not get home until eight or nine at night. Right, right. So I hear salespeople wave their hand all the time saying, I'd like to be more successful. I'd like to make more money. But are you willing to pay the price? Yes, yes. Right? Absolutely. I won't go home without getting my HPAs done. My mm -hmm. wife, Bonnie, had to hear that call forever. Uh, because I want, I, I know if I do the activities, then the results will be there. Mm -hmm. And I can't let other people's urgencies get in the way of my fundamentals of knowing what I do. Yeah, right? yeah I, I think that's, a, I couldn't, you put it fantastically there because I do think, and I think it's become more of a thing nowadays is, you know, we always say, oh, you know, I'm so busy. I'm, I'm way busier than be ever before. We're so much busier, no more time anymore. And the reality is, if we did a complete honest analysis of are we really more busy or we just got more things to distract ourselves with more, you know, yeah. a lot more less important things to distract ourselves with. So I like what you just said about the fact that you you've got to focus on them and not let them go and get them done. It, it look, the, the top people in sales are the top people year after year after year. Mm -hmm. Now. They've got the same economy, they have the same competitor, they have the same product, the same price, the same service. But these top people are the same each time. Well, then what, what's, the, what's the gift, right? Well, what, what it is, is they figured out the system and process, and they do the work and follow it. And yeah. so, so, the, so either, either the other salespeople that are not top producers are not willing to pay the price, or they don't have a clue, <laughs> right? So we can give them a clue by the playbook, and then it's a question of, are you willing to pay the price? Yeah. After that, it's the, the question of uh, you know, hard work and application, right? Uh, you know what? Um, my, Michael Jackson, before he died, was viewed as one of those pop sensation um, um, if, if recording artists, right? Mm -hmm. um, but right before he died, he was practicing like a madman for his tour. Right. Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones have been at this thing for 60 some years and they're still practicing. I went to see them and on the floor they had their their song sheet that they were going to be doing as a concert that night. And I'm like, these guys have been at it for 50, 60 years. I mean, don't they know the songs by now? <laughs> but, but they've got their playbook taped on the floor. Right. And they're following the playbook. Like, guys, everybody that's any good is practicing, has the playbook, has a coach, and the salespeople are like, ah, I, I, I got my own style. <laughs> you know, sales is somehow different. It's BS. Yeah, yeah. Missing your quota isn't much of a style, is it, at the end of the day? <laughs> <laughs> look, look, here's what I know. Um, you do sales. Uh, sales is hard. Yeah, no, um, obviously, yeah. The majority of the time it, we're dealing with rejection. And the way I like to put it to my sales guys is this. If you do sales without a playbook and without a commitment to doing the activities, then welcome to the world of skinny kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, and, and just one last thing, you know, before we end up here is, um, 
is if you had one message to salespeople, what would it be around like you know really just taking control and investing in yourself? What would it be? HBAs, truly, it's all about high payoff activities. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 like, I've got a guy over in Australia that has gone to my workshop four years in a row. And he was making the first year, he told me he was making $87,000 a year. He was a commission only sales guy, no base salary. Right. Um, four years later, he's making annually over a million bucks a year in commissions. And I said, what's the difference? And he said, all I do is pick up two or three things from you each year. I go to your workshop and I implement them. And I said, so what, what's the biggest one that I got that you got? He said, 168 and HPAs. Excellent. Well, there's the advice from a guy that's knocking down a million bucks a year in, in, in income. Yeah. So that's a great message for anybody watching or listening, you know, just get on it now and focus on and make sure you, you, know, you identify those, those high payoff activities and you get rid of all the ones that are just dragging you down and then be disciplined and let get rid of all the other distractions. There's a lot of nonsense going on that you don't really need to pay attention to. Uh, my, my, my top guy, before we go here, John, my, yeah. my top sales guy one year, um, made enough money that he came in and, and tearfully resigned and retired because he was going to go spend and travel the world and all that. Right. And about two months after he left, he came in with five years worth of expense reports that he wanted to be paid on. And my CFO didn't want to pay them. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, the guy, the guy, the guy didn't did, do, didn't do his expense report because it wasn't an HPA. It wasn't right. a high payoff activity. <laughs> the guy was so busy making money. Now, the guys that aren't making any money in sales, they're religiously handing in their expense reports. They look like they are museum pieces. They're so neat. Right. Yeah. But my top producer, his his receipts are missing. The columns don't add up. I mean, it's a complete piece of trash because he's like. I don't I like that's that's a distraction. I need to go b b bring some more business in. <laughs> yeah, that's a great that's a great one to finish on. And Jack, just before we go, I want you to just tell the viewers and the listeners a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you. The easiest way to do that in the interest of time is, you know, the the World Wide Web. So it's it's Jack Daly and that's spelled D A L Y dot net. So Jack Daly dot net. Um, and um, it, our website is loaded up with bios and books and audios and all the videos and all of the rest of that. Um, we're, we're here as a resource, John. Uh, I've had my day in the field. Uh, I'm 69. I'm traveling the world and um, having a bunch of fun while I'm uh, trying to dis disperse these gems for other people to enjoy the life like I enjoyed. Yeah. And just to add, uh, not just traveling the world, but doing Ironman competitions, right? Uh, not only Ironmans. How about this for a big one? Uh, last week, I did my 50th state marathon. So I completed all the states in the wow. U.S. in running a marathon. It was my 91st marathon. And three weeks from today, I will be on the Great Wall of China running a marathon it will complete all the continents that I've done a marathon on. Wow. I've been on the Great Wall of China, and there's a lot of steps on that. So you're <laughs> going to be running up and down steps? There's over 6,000 steps on the race. Oh, my goodness. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.